Hello, welcome back to the Stargate series. Um, in the last series, we spent some time. In the last series, in the last video, we spent some time um, refactoring our game main game loop. Um, we did some things. I don't think it's finished where it is, but I think for I also think for now it's good enough. Uh, technically, we can now run two AIs duking it out against each other. Um, and this is maybe what we're going to do in this rather short video. In between, I thought about uh, uh, one idea that I had is that uh, in our move function, we will now have a display parameter, which if something falls over, it actually prints the board and sleeps for a second. Mm, I want to play around with how this uh, how this looks like. So if we open up the game, this uh, would be my example. I also changed the input from not taking comma, but spaces. Mm. So if, we, if I now tip over this one, we can see it a little bit animated, how it's tipping over everything and then the AI starts. So not sure this is really good. I will leave it for now, so here we can see. Oh, I changed it to 30 seconds. All right, let's wait this one time. Mm. Huh. Zero, three. Supposed to be good, but three, three is better. And zero, two is even better. Come on, 30 seconds is not that long. I changed it to 30, right? 60, oh. Well, one minute per move. Hmm. Okay, when they do get out, they get 35 seconds each. That felt, felt kind of a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, so it didn't manage to finish this one. So it's zero. Uh, because now if it also plays here, I guess. No, it would play zero two again. And then top it over. Hmm. To build uh, two fours over here. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, we are gonna let them duke it out on a four by four field and then uh, new four four. Interesting. Ah, that's me. I just needed it for this board. This was actually a three. Um, new three three. Uh, new four four. This is better. Set one in Monte Carlo tree search, and both of them get thirty five seconds each. Now let's see if this is somehow going to be interesting or not. So, so far Monte Carlo Tree Search has had a couple of interesting moves where it moved on the side of the board rather than in the middle as the beginning move, but that was in a much smaller field. So here it's probably going to get roughly equal, I would assume. Maybe 35 is quite long. Should we change it to interesting? So with this move, it had a lot of success. But then again, the interesting part here is, and this is something we might incorporate on our algorithm actually, is that we have a symmetry, right? Playing here shouldn't be any different than playing here or here or here or here or here or here or here for that matter. So as soon as we play in this little, actually this, let me think, in this little grid, we only need to play on these four fields and then we have symmetry working for us. So somehow we need to figure out what to do about this. And then my alpha beta. Mm, moves to 2, 2. Because playing in the middle is... Uh, uh, this one I also wanted to change back. Let me immediately change this because maybe we need to do a restart or something. 
but I want to not increment this by two. Get the move depth, get this move time here. I only want to increment this by one. I shouldn't do this. This is the this is slightly dumb. Um, so now there's like hmm. not so much to comment yet. I think my algorithm will. will my algorithm, both of them is what I wrote, but uh, alpha beta is probably going to look to conquer the center by also placing a 3 here. Not sure what the idea of Monte Carlo tree search is. Probably none really, I guess it's really random what happens so early in the game. Although... Alpha Beta thinks it's gonna be behind. Ah, this was uh, wrong. This is not complete. Mm. Okay, I mean, I still consider this to be roughly random. Mm. And it was cut off. Six is too deep. We might have found something at five, and especially now that we have quiet moves, uh, it doesn't matter if we end on an opponent's move or on our own move, because we will always check is the opponent actually capturing something after. So, this one, uh, actually, Alpha Beta thinks it already gain some advantage because usually we start with a minus three in the evaluation because uh, by the time the opponent moves again since the opponent started we would be behind and here alpha beta thinks it found some some move which would basically give it one the advantage of one move three points just to make clear what I mean is uh, all the way when we started out, um, Monte Carlo tree search puts a three and now uh, alpha beta always searches a depth of two. So it moves and uh, the opponent moves. And when the opponent moves, then the score will be uh, three for alpha beta and six for the opponent. So the evaluation is minus three. But uh, here we already got better and here we even found a zero, which means we are, we picked up, we caught up on this. And this is probably by, oh, if I place a four here and I top it over, then technically these stones belong to me. And the colored research is pretty heavy with this move. This was one, three, one, three. While, uh, Alpha Beta also thinks this was, well, still considers it to be better than before itself. Mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, something fell over. Oh, this is, it is slightly confusing, but This one fell over first, and then this one fell over. Oh yeah. We should print a board before it falls over. Two, otherwise it's hard to see. So what does Monte Carlo do here? I think pushing this over is not the worst idea, but no, it plays into the corner because it knows it has dominance over those two fields, I guess. Mm. But 
but uh, it's not as sure anymore. And that's where you see that uh, I think the sample size is just way too low, like a thousand games and 54% of them won by playing random moves. Hmm. One thing we should actually also start printing here is the principal variation to see how, how many nodes has it actually expanded. And maybe uh, write the win percentages on these expansions as well. Okay, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Alpha Beta is just okay taking, taking more space, essentially controlling these squares, while this one is controlled by uh, Monte Carlo. It's pretty hard now to do anything because if if you want to attack, maybe you have to attack here. Yeah, exactly. Because if you try to attack here, then he would put a 4 here and you cannot make this a 4, otherwise he will capture this. But by putting a 4 here, or, or forcing this one to capture, hmm, You, sh you next you also need a three here. Then you force him to capture. He will make a four and a four. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work. I don't know. I think, and Alpha Beta agrees that it's f ahead. Mm -hmm. mm, three, two. Now we tip this over, and then there's a four and a four here. I'm not so sure how this helps. Yeah, I think this game is technically one. Now. We should actually run a couple of experiments. So this is nice on a 4x4 field, like especially Alpha Beta still can search to a depth of 5 or 6 or something. But what if we make this a 10x10 grid? Then Alpha Beta would search maybe depth of 3 or something. Yeah, something topped over. I think topping over is actually more confusing as an animation. It's maybe nice if, if you play as a player, but What was the evaluation? 25. So this is... twenty-three, and then 8, 10, 25. This must be the whole board, no? Yeah, even Monte Carlo now agrees that it loses in the majority of cases. And you put a 3 here. Maybe, I'm not sure. How do you engage this? Actually, I would make a 3 here. If you... Well... It's dangerous. Dangerous territory. It's not easy. Let's see. 2-0. Two, zero. Two, zero. Okay, put a 3 here. Basically force him to make this a 4, I guess. And put here and then he must make here a four and you put here then he makes here a four and make here and then he has to top this over maybe you can immediately try to increase this so that it is a four after <laughs> so to I think zero three. Zero three. Yeah, whatever, right? Three one. Mm -hmm. zero, zero. Mm 
<laughs> but even after eight moves, there's still no win, which is surprising. Because what's left? Play here. Play. What did you play? Is three one. Mm, interesting. Zero one. Yeah, now he found a move. This is also something we could implement that it uh, stops searching if we know that we're winning. Two one that gives me everything here. And he can play here, I don't know. Oh yeah, and then I win, or he plays here, and then I win, yeah. <laughs> Controlling the sender. Yeah, we don't need to watch this finish up. Like, can move here, then the next one is topping it over and winning, can play here, then this becomes a four, three, one, and then he throws this over, gets this, and the next one gets this. So, yeah. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> Battle of the Giants. I'm gonna end this video here, and then in the next video, I'm just torn. So there's many things I want to do. I want to replace this board with a NumPy board. This may be a bigger, bigger change. Uh, we can improve our uh, Monte Carlo tree search to show the principal variation. That's maybe a smaller change that we could put at the end of this video. Oh no, we should make a separate video as well. But then I want to make maybe a front end so we can put this in the browser, then we can play online. This would be nice too. Um, hmm. I'm just not sure. Yeah, I will end this video here. Maybe I'm going to make a short video after on adding the principal variation to Monte Carlo tree search. Um, replacing the board with a NumPy board is the bigger change, which I'm also dreading a little bit. So maybe we do this later. And then, of course, the overall arching goal is to implement some uh, deep reinforcement learning, get the AlphaGo algorithm, algorithm uh, started. Um, but I think we will do the other things first, even though the AlphaGo part is quite interesting. I have another deep learning series right now running. Um, yeah, thanks and uh, bye.